appreciate y'all taking the time to come sit down and talk a little bit. First of all, just we got CJ Wyndham here. Yes, sir. Where are you from, CJ? Uh, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia, Powder Springs. McEachin. Uh, yeah, McEachin. Kyle Born and raised? Yep, for sure. Powder Springs, I mean. How far a drive is that from? That's like here. three, maybe 15 from here. So not we're close. too far. We not close too to close, home. you know, so. And then, I mean, you played together? Yeah. That's, that's special, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, it's the experience. I mean, you know, I tell a lot of people, uh, you know, at this point, you know, with you being a coach and whatnot, that, you know, even as a player, you know, you kind of had that mindset to where I guess you you were more locked in and more focused than, you know, a lot of people that I played with. And I really felt like, you know, you being here is not really a change, yeah. you know, you still locked in, still the same kind of guy. No, know? I appreciate that because that's kind of the, my approach too to that whole relationship and that whole dynamic is like nothing's changed. Like you're not changing who you are. I'm not, the title might've changed. Right. But that's just kind of who we are. Like, right. even when I was here, you were a little bit younger, but it was more of that leadership role there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to show you the way a little bit. Right. And that's still the case today. Exactly. Uh, you grown up on me. I grew yeah, up a little man. bit, but ain't nothing changed. Right, right. <laughs> JP, Same how you doing? Man. Good, man. You're my guy. Yes, sir. Where are you from? Los Angeles, California. I love that. Tell me a little bit about, about your route you took, JUCO. Well, you know, well, it all comes back to, like, high school. Yep. So, you know. Growing up in, in the high school circuit, you know, you always wanted them Division One offers, right. and you know, of course, they're gonna. You want to go to the big top school. No doubt. That's in your mind, but just the way the cards. Did you I have any dealt, offers coming out of high school? I had one offer. One so offer. Northern Colorado. Northern Colorado. I had gotcha. one offer, but they was trying to offer me a partial. Okay. Partial scholarship. I was excited about the opportunity, as if you know right. me, I'm yeah. excited about all opportunities. No doubt. But, you know, I went back to with my family. They was just like a partial, like you're worth more than that, you know? So <clears throat> I just took the chance and I bet it on myself, you know? And uh, I sat down with my brother and my mom and we just talked about basically just, you know, what is it do you want to do? They told me, they just said, what is it you want to do? I said, I want to take the junior college route. They let me know. Uh, fortunately, the coach for the JUCO I went to he knew the coach from my high school. So you had a connection? I had a connection instantly. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, I know he knows how I play, he knows my game, and I know he's gonna look out for me. Right. And I know in the JUCO circuit, you know, you could easily get lost in the shuffle. Especially out there, it's different out there. Exactly, like, exactly. Because the JUCO out there, you're paying your own way. Exactly. Like, it's not, it's not sure. scholarships in California. Not at all, so I got to see everything. I, going in the JUCO circuit is probably the best thing like I, that ever happened to me and I have no regrets because I met people along the way that really cared about the game. Yep. And you know, and it, the resources is very, very small when it comes to JUCO. So just to see how my teammates was just hungry every day, you know, they might not, they might have not eaten, you know, they just came out ready yeah. to go. They just love to ball. And me like doing that, it kind of like shaped me. Yeah. And I knew I was gonna get out I knew, I knew, I just knew, I believed yeah. in myself. I knew I was gonna get out and then when I did, and then I got to where I was, you know, middle Tennessee, I kind of like knew what I was being prepared for. No doubt. And I kind of knew like in my heart that, okay, this is what I made it out for. Yeah. And I think the special thing, like after hearing you say that is, yeah, I really took two completely different routes. Yes, sir. Like you went to big time high school yeah. in yeah. Georgia, played good ball. Yeah. like you took a completely different route and then you come here, you're both leaders of the room. Like mm -hmm. you're both like viewed as team captains, like both produce on the field, yes, but it's just crazy. Like the people that you come in, like once you step in the locker room, nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. Like the people on the outside, there's people that take so many different routes mm -hmm. and get to where we're at. And that's mm -hmm. how, like that brotherhood. Yes, sir. Like you can look at our room right now and like all different types of like races, backgrounds, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And nobody else knows that, but we know that. Mm -hmm. It's right. kind of crazy, it's special. Right. And that's a line that each and everyone, like, especially in our group, mm -hmm. they know. Yeah. They know that no matter where you're from, no matter how old you are, you know, I could talk to a freshman as like, they shouldn't even feel like, okay, he's a senior, he's a freshman, I don't want to talk to him. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's nothing like that. That's not how we operate. It's authentic, you know, and that's just. On that same note, I'm gonna start with you, CJ. And there was something I was kind of thinking about. Like if you could go back, so how, what year is it, six coming up? Year six. So six years ago, like, cause you just saw these freshmen step in here 
couple days ago. If you could tell yourself, kind of like just one piece of advice, like you're about to step on this new journey, like it's probably 40 pounds ago, mm -hmm. like you, you changed man now, but six years ago, like what would you tell yourself stepping into college, like knowing what you know now? Uh, I, I said a lot of different things because, you know, I've been through a it lot. It could of, be a couple things. They don't got to be yeah, one thing. Yeah, I've, I've been through a lot of things since, you know, I've yeah, been I know here. you have. Uh, I definitely say to be a little bit more hungrier than the next man uh, to you because, you know, that's something that I feel like I've grown to learn, you know, in the years being here that, you know, across the country, I mean, there's plenty of guys that are, you know, the exact same and there's plenty of guys that can do what you can do, but it's more like, what are you gonna do to separate yourself, not only on the field, but off the field, no you know, like character wise, you know, what kind of person are you to, I mean, the athletic trainer or, you know, the yeah. equipment guy, you know, no like, doubt. you know, those little things, you just coming in, you know, speaking more, cause I feel like I was a little bit more reserved yeah. when I first got here, but you know, and that's with fine, this family that's atmosphere, fine, yeah. you know, you open up and you know, I mean, step into your person, I feel like, and, I mean, yeah, that that probably be the biggest thing I feel like for me, uh, you know, just trying to separate myself in all facets of life, not just with Bob, because I feel like I was real just focused on, you know, just football being everything, but making sure that everything in your life is, is something pushing towards a goal that no I have set for myself. And I feel like I can say firsthand, like being your teammate and now being your coach, like, like you really live that. Like you've always been like first class, top notch individual like Appreciate that. great like young man to now man like you've always kind of represent represented yourself in the right way but even hearing you say wish you were a little more hungry mm -hmm. like there ain't nothing wrong with like you can be friendly but coming here and just competing outworking mm -hmm. everybody right. uh, and you've always worked your tail off but it's just that sense of having that confidence to step in as mm -hmm. a young cat mm -hmm. and and kind of step up like not being a, not being afraid to say to the older guy hey let's go yeah. Like, I know I'm young, but let's go. Yeah. And I, I like that you said that because I think a lot of young guys kind of wait their turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there is like a little, there's a flow to it. Like, exactly. you don't, you don't want to come in and say too much, but mm -hmm. like in terms of just working, like there's something about that. Yeah. So sure. I like that. Sure. What about you, JP? One thing, if you, or a couple things, just kind of talking to, let's say yourself stepping into Division One football. It's like when you stepped here two years ago, Kind of what, what have you learned? What, what would you tell yourself two years ago? Or have you liked how you attacked it? Um, <clears throat> I mean, going back, like really thinking back on when I first got here, as far as when, I, when the plane first landed in Tennessee, like I'm far from home. No doubt. And I knew it like I had one thing to do, and that's to play football and to go to school. So it was just like, okay, when I got here, it was a culture shock to me because I really didn't know nobody. And I was so used to the, like, you know, fast. I was just living fast. It's different you know, out there. It was a faster pace. And, that, yeah. and so when I got here, it just, it kind of made me just feel like, okay, you're here for a reason, you know? Uh, and I just, I just kept that same thought in my head. Like I'm here for a reason, you know? And I, and I never forget, like it was one time, cause I came, I come, I came in the summer. So, you know, I didn't go, I didn't do spring. Yeah. I didn't do none of that. So, like, yeah. my whole mindset was to first know the playbook and perform. Yeah. That was it. When I do that, I know, like, I'm going to start, the ball's going to get rolling. So, just the more I kept playing, I just knew I kept getting more comfortable with yeah. my teammates, you know, meeting guys like CJ. You know, it was just, it was just an eye opener, like, okay, this is something new that I've never been exposed to, you know. I'm not home anymore. I'm growing up, you yep. know. Uh, I'm starting to see the world for, you know, what it really is, right. you know, and I feel like I have a purpose. Right. So I honestly just, I'm just grateful. The thing that th you brought up kind of like two things, both of y'all, I feel like we see it a lot. Like I saw it as a player, when you step in the locker room, you got some cats, like they get to this level and it's like, okay, there's more to be done. Mm -hmm. Like I got a purpose, like I, I got more goals to reach. Mm -hmm. There's other cats where it's like, I arrived. Like mm -hmm. I got a scholarship. I'm good. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like both of y'all are representation of like you weren't satisfied. Like you know there's more out there. Mm -hmm. Like I can look in your eye and know that I'm here. Like you're happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Like you're taking it all in. But 
in the long run, like there's more goals to be accomplished. For sure. And the other thing I feel like both of y'all do, and you brought it up, is like, when an NFL scout comes in here, they already know what you're doing on the field, but they're worrying about how you treat people. And you talked about mm -hmm. how you're going to treat the trainer, the equipment manager. Like, I feel like both, both of y'all are leaving a lasting impact on everybody around you. For sure. And also the young freshmen. Like, you're not too cool to take Elijah under your wing or mm -hmm. take so-and-so under your wing. Like, you treat everybody the same. Yes, sir. And yeah. I think that's a testament to why, like, you guys are viewed as team leaders. Yeah. Um, so. On a different note, maybe we kind of got deep quick. I like that. Starting with you, JP, bouncing it back. Best memory so far? It could, Here? Yeah, individual, team. Like, it could be on the field, off the field. I feel like I know this one. Best memory. It could be a uh, touchdown. It could be anything. Yeah, I was going to go to that. Really, my best memory was uh, playing in Michigan. Yep. First game. Mm -hmm. Yep. First game yeah. ever here. First game ever here. First game ever. You were rocking 86. Yes, sir. 86, oh, man. 86 yeah. chose me. I tell okay. a lot of people, because people tell me, uh, <laughs> why did you uh, go to nine? I say, you know, I chose nine. You know, 86 chose me. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I was just like, you know, now nah, you got to stick with nine. Yep. But that's how every number I was. I just knew, like, I can make the number, yeah. you know. It's just So Michigan Big House. Yeah, Michigan Big House. What, what kind of took place? All right, so we was on Because I wasn't here. I don't even know. Okay, look. So, first game, we had Michigan. Playing and, outside uh, receiver at the time. I'm playing outside receiver. Yep. Yes, sir. Playing outside receiver. But we end up on the goal line, you know. And I love the goal line. You know, I love I love red zone. So, we like six, seven yards out, yep. you know. And uh, I guess uh, the backers blitzed. Okay. I had a, uh, I had a blitz read. I'm coming across. Yep. Like so, a little shallow cross? Yeah, I'm coming across on a shallow cross. But I'm open, though. Like, I already know. Hmm. I'm open. So I'm waiting for him to just throw it. That's it. I'm just waiting. He throws it at the last, like, the last little. He throws a little dump off. It's a little drop. It's in the air for a minute? It's, in the, it's not in the air for a minute, but it's a little dump off. Like, you know, okay, it's going to come. Like, yeah. So when I, as soon as I seen it, it felt like it was in the air for a minute, though, because no I knew. <laughs> so I'm like, come on, come on. Ah, touchdown. I scored. First touchdown. Ever. Yes, sir. Coach Stock. Coach Stock comes over to me. You know, I like making him happy, so Coach Stock comes over to me like, congratulations, sir. The old like, school handshake. Yes, sir. And so we did that this like, year. We chest bumping. Yes, sir. Yeah. For sure. And then uh, when he did that, I knew. Like That's I had special, to, though. It was special, yeah. I had to keep going. No doubt. What about you, CJ? Kind of got two surreal moments uh, for me. You know, both of those are touchdowns as well. Uh, for me, it was more so uh, one, I got my first touchdown on my birthday, which was kind of crazy, and I actually got that pass from you. Uh, I scored on a post, you know, it was one of those things. Well, what that, game was that? That was uh, Old Dominion here, I think. We oh, were, yeah, I remember exactly what it yeah. was. I, I just you was on 20. the right, mm -hmm. who was going towards the game day room. Yeah, from this way, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I feel like I almost messed it right up because I was like double stick the post, but it ended up working out. Yeah, it worked we out. Lost it and in there. And, uh, you know, I scored, and then the first person, you know, come speak to me is you. You know, you're like, happy birthday, man. You know, I was with yeah. you. And I, that, it, it was crazy because, you know, I had been here for, I feel like, a couple years, maybe my third year, and, you know, I, just, I still hadn't scored, you know, and that was something that was, you know, just surreal to me that on my birthday I got to get in the yeah. end zone for the first time. And then my second surreal moment, uh, uh, it was a little more touching. Uh, my mom passed in 2018. Uh, you know, y'all know that. And, yep. you know, one before I get into that, you know, this family here, you know, at MT was, you know, everything I needed and more, you know, at that time to get me through, you know, that moment in time in my life for me and my family. And, you know, it absolutely meant the world to me because, you know, a lot of people just don't shake back from those kind of things. You know, I wouldn't say I shook back real quick, but, you know, at the same time, having those loving, caring arms to come into no doubt. made it a little easier for me to, you know, transition back into doing what I love on the field. So. Uh, you know, it's our first game of the season. My mom passed August the 24th. Uh, we playing in September and uh, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Yep. You know, first game of the season. Uh, I actually caught another pass from you. It was a quick out route on the goal line. A back like, shoulder. Yeah. No, you and, bumped inside in the slot. Yep. yep. Uh huh. And uh, threw me back shoulder, and it, it's kind of crazy because the last conversation I actually had with my mom. She talks about football and, you know, she, she talks about my favorite route and the route that me and Brent always connect on is, you know, back shoulder. And, and they can ask my dad, you know, that surreal conversation, last conversation, ended up being the one that started the season off. And, uh, you know, she always talked about getting to that game and being able to see 
you know, me scoring that favor her out. And sure enough, I feel like she did, you know, front, front row seat from heaven, you it's know. Crazy. Uh, it That's was special. just a feeling to wear out of body experience. Yeah, you know, no doubt. just you're, you're full of joy from the inside in out to where it almost makes you want to share some tears of joy. Yeah. You know, that was absolutely amazing to me getting to spend that with my brothers and my family, you know. I so. think on that same note, I remember, so we got beat by Vandy. Mm -hmm. We came back the next week, UT Martin. Yeah. And like first, what, two touchdowns or three? Yeah, I had three. Mm -hmm. So, but then you got hurt. Yeah. It was like three before halftime. Mm -hmm. But I just remember, so like it was Vandy and then you did that, remember? Yeah. And yeah. then I remember every touchdown we threw with that UT Martin game, yeah. I kind of ran up to you yeah. and we did that and yeah. we both look up and it was just special. Like I got chills thinking about it, yeah. but like that, I remember that like it was, it was yeah. yesterday. Yeah, well, wow. it might have been too. But uh, yeah, it's just something that I, I trademark, you know, catch me any touchdown I have now, you know, it's just my love, no you know, kiss of a joy. And, you know, we still down here doing what it is that, you know, we talked about for time, I mean, plenty of years, you know, beforehand, yeah. getting to do what I love, getting to do what I love for her and his family. You know, I know you're so. making her proud for sure, bro. Yeah, making her proud. Most definitely. Hey, <laughs> hey, proud of you, dog. Love you, bro. No doubt. Love you, bro. That's love. Love y'all. Love y'all, man. JP, love if you, just kind of things popping in my head, and I know kind of what I would describe you as, but I'm gonna hold for a minute. Kind of like one word, maybe your teammates, any of your peers to describe you. What do you think, like, what do you think a word that comes to mind to describe you that they would say? Genuine. Genuine? No I doubt. I think like, yeah, it's just, just genuine. It's just who you are. You're going to get what you, with me, you're going to get what you get. Like you're a captain, right? Yes, sir. You feel like you're a captain because of how genuine, that's part of it. There's a lot of things that go into be a captain, but. Yes, sir. Like, you got to treat people, you got to be real. Yes, sir. Like, there ain't no faking, like, how you treat people, fake this, fake, like, it's genuine, real love, word, all that. Mm -hmm. yes, I agree. Sir. I think the word that would come to, come to mind to me is, I tell people, like, you're an alpha. Like, I think, like, on the inside, like, nice dude, like, you're going to treat everybody, you're going to love everybody, but, like, I look at you as, like, an alpha dog uh, in everything that you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're just, you're that guy. Sure. So that's kind of my word. For sure. Um, Oh, man. It's all love, man. That's love. It's all love. What's, right now? Yeah. Uh, What's up, man? How it's does, crazy. How does it feel? You a father. It's crazy. No, it's a blessing. Uh, probably like 11 days old now. 11 days old now. Sky stock still. Mm -hmm. Little girl. Healthy. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. But I've always wanted to be a dad, man. That's always right. wanted to be a dad. Like, I think it's just something special. That I've just always wanted to do, start a family, beautiful wife, she's superwoman, um, but it's just going to be cool, like, just kind of raising her, like, watching her grow, being there for her every step of the way, uh, and it is special to me to have a girl, for yes, sure, sir. like, I think a lot of dads are like, you know, you want the next football player, you want the next this and that, but for me to have a girl, it's special, because she can be whatever she wants to be, exactly. like, if she wants to grow up and be a singer, or an actress, or a teacher, or an athlete, whatever she wants to be, it's just going to be special, and I, I'm just, I'm excited for y'all to meet her soon. Man. And I'm glad all the the COVID mess going away, and we can kind of get back to being true family, being around each and other. You, and and oh, you talk man. about uh, super mom. Tell me a little bit more about Jess. You know, I know y'all were about Jess? together throughout so, college. And oh, yeah. Nice. So oh yeah, so we've been together for a long time, uh, since very early on in college. So she came from Detroit, Michigan, right outside of Detroit to run track. Uh, she was on full track scholarship. A lot more athletic than me. Uh, she's beautiful, and we, I mean, we've just been together for so long, been through so much together, uh, so many different moves and coaching stops and all that, and then kind of had this moment. But she, like, no matter what she does, like, she just excels. Like, it could be, like, she she might not know what she's doing when she gets into it, but she just figures figures a way to be the best, and that that's just being real right there. Uh, I mean, she. Just watching her kind of go through this next phase of being a mom and all that stuff, like it just makes you appreciate them so much more about kind of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I'm at work all day. Mm -hmm. I get here early, you know, when it's time to go home, I go home, but she's the one kind of doing the, you know, the tough stuff throughout the day, throughout the night, and I, just, I love her. I'm, I'm glad yeah, you asked. Listen, listen, man, I feel like Sky's in a real good household, you know, with real good, strong parents, you know. Uh, nah. Talking appreciate about, um, 
uh, you coming up through college. Because, you know, I've, I've been here. This is obviously my sixth year. You know, and you yeah. did some time here as well. You know, tell me about yeah. you know, your process getting here and throughout the time. So. Yeah. So for me, I mean, it's kind of like JP talked about. Like to me, I feel like I overachieved. You know, like we did a lot of good things, but I'm not quite sure that I, I was I was meant to do those things. I think I overachieved based on the things that we've been talking about. So I came here, I gray shirted, which is basically like walking on. I couldn't do nothing my first year. You might not even know some of this. No, so no, I, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying about my okay, yeah, my yeah. past. So yeah, I came yeah. here, I gray shirted, I was a walk on, kind of was basically like a manager throughout the whole fall. And then next year I competed for the job. I got beat out. I was the backup. So that's two years just kind of grinding, earning my way. The next year uh, I was named the starter and we did some good things. You know, that was when we had Richie. You know, Ed Batty's freshman All-American, all that. Uh, but just kind of my whole, like, if you go back and watch, like I'm not, I wasn't really physically gifted like that, but I feel like the stuff that we've been talking about, just outworking everybody, treating your teammates the right way. Like, I feel like I could raise the standard of play of everybody around me just with the way I operate. Like, I'm not going to be the, the biggest, the fastest, the strongest arm, but like, I'm going to get you guys to play at a high level and as a team. And then individually, I just, I just felt like I outworked people. Uh, and then that kind of led to a couple of years of starting and doing some good things. Uh, but I just, I believe like you guys represent this of like, okay, your natural talent is going to take you right here. Like whatever you do to kind of get to that next phase, that's on you. And like, that's if you outwork the guy next to you, if you do the little things. Like I walked in there today and all you guys were on the Norman Tech boots. Ain't nobody else in there, but y'all, you guys are recovering, doing the extra things. Like, you guys are always hitting up the quarterbacks to go throw. Like, that's the stuff that makes you great. You know what I'm saying? Like, your natural, natural talent, natural ability, sure, it's going to get you here. It's going get to you, get you a little ways. But what you do with it, that's on you. So I feel like, to answer your question, that's kind of my journey and why I was able to have a little bit of success. Nah, it just bounce back off. Nah, we don't need to quit. We need to quit talking about me. This is about you guys. Nah, but but just last thing, just last thing. I'm extremely proud of you, man. Like, honestly, honestly, like, from what we do, like, it's it's more like than a play. It's more than a player coach type thing. Like, it's way bigger than that, you know, because I look, I, I see you. Yeah. I know who I play for. Yeah. So I, I actually look at you and I'm proud of you. I appreciate that. And I'm just, I'm just thankful, man, because, like, you guys no, give us the resources. That. Yeah. You I know? appreciate that. I feel like that's something, I mean, that means a lot that you say that because people ask, you know, you're a young guy. How are you going to attack the room? How are you going to manage your room? Like, what are you going to do different? You played here. Like, you played with CJ. You played with Jimmy. You played with Yusuf. Like, and I tell I'm not doing anything different. Like, why, it's the same thing you talk about, genuine. Like, why would I come in and try to be somebody that I'm not? Yeah. And I feel like now, a couple months later, I've been here since January, like, you, nobody else needs to know or they don't, like, they don't have to know, but the love that we have in our room, like, it's professional, it's genuine, it's real. Like, we compete, but we have fun. Yes, sir. And I think, you know, that's a testament more to you guys. Like, it's player run. Like, it's, the best teams are player led. The best rooms are player led. I kind of give you the tools, kind of give you the, the boundaries, the guidelines, and then you take it wherever you want to go. So that's a testament yeah, to the leadership of you guys. That authenticity, I feel like, uh, is what makes it easy to come to work for you. Makes it yeah. you know, easy for all the guys around me to come to work in the receiver room as well. And you know, to build off of you know, what you're talking about, you know, everybody in that room just kind of has like that same mindset. You know, for me, I pick up off of that energy. You know, with, yeah everybody's coming from another thing, picking up from that background thing, everybody coming from different backgrounds and everybody bringing something different to the table. You know, I feel like that's something that we all use to our advantage when, you know, we go back and look at film, you know, we look at um, just the way each other live. I mean, we take bits and pieces of everybody and inhibit it in our game and our way of life. And, you know, I really feel like that's the biggest testament to that, you know, bigger than ball. I feel like, you guys can attest to this, and maybe this is my opinion, like the receiver room, like just in general, any receiver room, wherever you go, like naturally it's gonna be a little selfish, right? There's three to four receivers, there's one ball, and there's a lot of guys that can play. But for some reason, like there is not that in our room. 
Like there's 20 guys and do we compete? Are we coming after each other? Like, you know, you got somebody behind you pushing you. You got somebody behind you pushing you. Constantly bringing in guys to create competition, but for some reason, like the type of guys we got in our room, the culture we have, is not a selfish room. It's like, we got a lot of love for each other. We want to see our teammates be great and that kind of thing. And exactly. it's just kind of cool for me to see, see to I see that like because I feel like it's not yeah. normal. All right, definitely. So, say you had all the money in the world. Okay, money's not an issue. Like, what, what are you passionate about and like, how would you give back? Like for me, like my passion was always like special needs, whether it's Special Olympics, going here, going there. Like that would be my way of, whether it's a foundation or whatever it is to give back. For you, like, is there something that is like close to your heart that you're passionate about where that would be your way of kind of giving back to those who might need it? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, going back to, you know, my mom's, uh, the reason she passed was because of breast cancer, you know. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know, there are plenty of different, you know, different funds and organizations and different things that, no you know, contribute to, you know, trying to find a cure for that. But, you know, I really feel like there's no limit to that. You know, I, I really feel like you can continue to push forward as much as you can. You know, any little bit will help that. Um, I definitely would love to see, you know, somebody, you know, find a, a true cure to that to where, you know, that's not right. a thing to where people have to worry about losing loved ones, you know, yeah. to that anymore. Um, uh, all the money in the world, you know, I just kind of feel like most importantly kind of wouldn't change my character. I'm a family guy. I, I yeah. really want to see, you know, my sisters and, you know, just, not just a family guy, I'm a, you know, people oriented guy. So, you know, I wouldn't say I just. Like your circle, your circle right just, there. You know, just whatever, but I just really feel like I love to see the people around me be more successful than just me, you know. That's real. I, I, I always feel like life is just bigger than yourself you know I, I feel like if you're not leaving this earth making an impact to where everybody around you and plenty of people can make a testament to you know how good of a person you were then you, I mean what did you do you know on this earth so you know I really feel like money can change a lot of lives and you know obviously you know that's a goal that I'm working towards and you know I'd love to just change everybody's lives around me. you know it's always bigger than me I feel like what about you, JP? Anything close to your heart that you would like to give back? Like maybe it's back home, maybe a, whatever. Uh, really, the homeless. You know, I would give a lot of money. Like I would invest into the homeless, give them shelter. Really look into that because you know my mom. You might you don't know this, but my mom works for the Union Rescue Mission okay. in downtown LA on Skid Row. So, like growing up, like me and my brother, my mom would take us to literally go feed them, help in the cafeteria just do anything like she she instilled in us how to give back so yep. it's just like if any <laughs> whatever money I come into I'm for sure you know giving it to the people that need it most and uh like CJ said I'm gonna for sure take care of my family yeah. and the people that love me the most and you know just invest you know just try to grow try to make the money grow the thing and on that same note and this is what I think about you guys it's like a quote is like people will ne people will forget like what you said to them like in 10 years you're not going to remember what I said to you but you're always going to remember how I made you feel so when I look at you two it's like everybody you come in contact with random people whoever it is that you're on, around on a day-to-day -day basis like they're going to forget what you said but they're always going to remember the energy that you brought the way you made them feel that you made them feel good about themselves like and when I look at you guys and I watch you from afar that's what you guys are. Like you represent that, and that that goes a long way. So like the rest of your life, like as we grow older together, I mean we ain't that far apart. Like just remember that. Like people are gonna forget what you say, but like just keep always making people feel good about themselves. Definitely, definitely. I feel like that's who you are. I got a, I got a question. Uh, JP, you know. He got one. Sorry, he's got one. Li living on the West Coast, you know, you Cali kind of guy, whatever. You know, I guess it's more on a, on a lighter note. You know, you. What's the, the swag out there? Well, you know, I'm a shoe kind of guy. I'm a fashion kind of guy, you know, from Atlanta. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 not right now. I'm coming up with Atlanta, but, right now. you know, just tell me about no, the culture but, out that way. The culture really, you know, West Coast culture. It's really just being yourself, though, but just having a 
whatever you was having the ultimate swag and trying to be the best, <laughs> try to be the best at what it is, whatever you doing, just try to be the best yeah. at it. You know, like we look at that shoes, we look at, we like jewelry, all that. But if you re really West Coast, you know, cause there's a lot of stuff that people do not like about yeah. the West Coast and what they do love about the West Coast. Beaches, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. got your beaches, but as far as, you know, Having that swag, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, like you know, like if you're an LA person and you're from LA and anywhere in California, you gonna know. Oh, you from there too? What part? Blah blah blah. You gonna chop it up, you know. And it was just all about just connection and it's just vibe. Like it's just vibe. Like that. It's just, just vibe. vibes. Yeah, it's yeah. all vibes. That's it's almost all it like is. The, vibes. Almost like the the language and you know. The way y'all speak, also, you know, a little bit different from, you know, the down south kind of, we use the oh, yeah. little country slang yeah. and stuff, this and that. You can nah. kind of tell when, you know, somebody that's not from, you know, around here or whatever. And, you know, I kind of nah, like that for vibe. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. for sure. That's how it was when I got down here. He like, already said it was a culture shot. He stepped off the plane. He probably seen <laughs> country music in the airport. Well, like, when I tell you I got down here and I, I was talking to people, like, I was like, I, I don't understand what you're saying. You know, like, it's just they had that little twang, they had that little accent, you know? <laughs> but when I, whenever I talk to my people back home or something, they say I have an accent. Uh, that's good. But then We're rubbing I, off. Yeah, and then when I talk to people down here, they say, oh, you do have a California accent. I was like, I didn't know California people have accents. Or West Side, West Coast people have accents. That's yeah. crazy. I think that's all the time oh, we it. got. Oh, hey, I appreciate y'all. That was fun. Thank you. Like, feel like now we're letting everybody see a different side of you guys kind of our relationship together. Uh, but I think that was special, kind of let everybody see kind of what we're all about. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Man, we got a lot of good things ahead. Yeah, appreciate that. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Yeah.